Wasatch Bigfoot Collecting Bird Nests Near Weber Canyon Power Plant James writes RMSO, I saw one near the power plant in Weber Canyon. It looked like it was reaching for a bird's nest under the bridge. I didn't even register what it was that I was seeing until I passed it. RMSO asks, Hi James, how long ago and if you don't mind please give us the details of your sighting. James continues, I'll look through my pictures and find a time frame. I recall it was about a week after I found a footprint. Looks like the first week of April 2021. This photo was just west of the 89 bridge. I was fishing the area. RMSO responds, The Bigfoot you saw reaching for the bird nest under the bridge. How tall would you estimate it may have been? What color was it? Could you see its face or any other details about it that you recall? James continues, I would estimate it was around 9 feet tall, reaching up around 14 feet on the center column of the bridge. I was headed to fish the rest stop early in the morning. The sun was just starting to rise, so it looked very dark. I drove past going about 65 miles an hour, so it was a fast glimpse. Like I said, my brain didn't even register the details until it was in the rear view mirror. I couldn't stop because it's the interstate. About a week later, I found the print in the mud roughly a mile downstream. The track was slightly larger than my size 12 shoe, so not that big, but bigger than my foot. If you're in the area, I'll take you to the spots and tell you my story. I usually keep it to myself because I've been harassed about it before. RMSO states, The track that you found is more than likely from a younger one. In our experience, there is usually more than one big foot in a given area whenever one is spotted or tracked. The large nine-foot-tall adult foraging for bird's nest under the bridge would have had a much larger track. Many different kinds of birds build nests under those bridges, especially the barn swallows that build mud and grass nests to lay eggs and raise their young in the spring. I can imagine when the nests are full of eggs or baby birds that this creature could consume a plentiful amount of protein and calories in a short amount of time. Investigating the bridges that go over the Weber River in the area, I found hundreds of barn swallow nests under many of the bridges, and I also noticed that nearly half the nests had been removed or destroyed. Not saying Bigfoot harvested or destroyed these nests. However, because of your observation of a Bigfoot reaching up under the power plant bridge that goes over the Weber River, I have to take into consideration that some of these may have been removed or destroyed or harvested by a Bigfoot. There has been a long history of Bigfoot sightings near the Weber River, especially in the communities at the mouth of the Weber Canyon. As a matter of fact, my dad had a high school friend in 1968 that used to live by the landfill near the mouth of the Weber Canyon that has since been reclaimed. He would come to school and tell my dad that some gorillas had come off the mountain again near the canyon and were foraging in the landfill during the night. My dad figured the gorilla creatures his friend saw occasionally and described were in fact Bigfoot coming off the mountain at night to forage in the landfill. South Weber Girl observes Bigfoot walking downhill behind her house. Dave Carver documented a Bigfoot sighting on utahbigfoot.blogspot.com that happened in the South Weber around 1977. A young girl was getting ready for church and looked out her back window. She saw a large bipedal creature walking down the hill behind her house. She went to church and that's when this story begins. After the whole congregation got out of church, the area was in uproar. It was the next day that Mr. Sanders and his friend decided they would try to find tracks and follow them. Mr. Sanders took Dave Carver to the Weber Basin Canal, where it goes under the road, right where the young girl's house still stands. The canal is fenced off now, but wasn't then. He pointed out what he found, a set of very large tracks at the bottom of the hill. They were easy to spot and followed to the canal. We could clearly see prints that came up to the edge of the canal, which is about 24 feet or so wide, and it was empty at the time, and about 4 to 6 inches of snow in the bottom. There was one single track in the middle of the canal, and two tracks on the other side where the creature landed and walked west along the north side of the waterway. Can you imagine the strength and muscle to propel an 800-pound creature 12 feet across, then drop 6 feet into the canal, and on the same foot jump to clear the other side? Incredible and unbelievable. It was not very far when we spotted another set of tracks, smaller than the first, 
and they walked together. The small ones must have been another creature like a youngster. The tracks later turned north and we lost them for a while, but picked them up in some tall cottonwood trees north of where we lost the tracks as they crossed the road. We had to circle around to find them again. They walked around in those trees a lot, but eventually went northeast and we lost them altogether as they were heading up Weber Canyon. South Weber Man describes Bigfoot creature making his horse nervous, crossing his pasture, then vocalizing after it disappears into the trees. In February of 1980, there were a string of Bigfoot sighting articles posted in the Ogden Standard Examiner newspaper near the Weber River below the mouth of Weber Canyon. Around 12.30 a.m. on February 4th of 1980, Ronald Smith arrived home from work. He noted something in his pasture near South Weber Road. While feeding his horses, he heard something on two legs crunching through the snow. In the direction of the crunching, he saw a dark figure silhouetted in the moonlight walking across the pasture into some trees. His only horse in the pasture at the time was acting kind of funny. Then the creature screamed. They were unlike anything I've ever heard. They sounded like a cougar, but only with a lot of volume. They were just different. I got out of there and into the house, Smith said. My wife was telling me to get the gun or camera, but it only lasted a few seconds. It screamed four times when I was outside and three more times after I got inside. I told my wife, I think it's Bigfoot out there. Those screams were unbelievable. Smith went into the field the next day to look for tracks and said he found marks about six feet apart and looked like it was something with toes, but that the horse had trampled the tracks throughout the night. He also said he thought his horse was acting funny for several days, and he feels that could be an indication that the Bigfoot was around for some time. One of Ronald's other horses was found dead the next morning with no discernible injuries. The horse's death was blamed on overexertion from running around the pasture scared. South Weber woman spots Bigfoot walking the ridge behind her house. A Deseret newspaper article from February 12, 1980 details. Pauline Markham said she saw it walking along a ridge or hill behind her house as she was standing at her kitchen sink around 4 p.m. She states, I looked at it and I thought, well, I'm going crazy, she said. Then I walked away from the window and came back and it was still there. Miss Markham said she was frightened and curious, but she did go outside to get a closer look. She said she was home alone. It would have taken a snowmobile to get up that hill and she was late for church anyway. So she left the house and went to church, telling only one friend about it. I really don't know what it was. I just don't have the slightest idea because I don't know if I believe in Bigfoot, Miss Markham said. Sasquatch spotted by motorist crossing Riverdale Road west of the Weber River. A newspaper article in the Ogden Standard Examiner on February 27, 1980 details. Riverdale. I didn't believe in them. But I sure do now, exclaims a clear-filled man who says Bigfoot ran through the headlights of his vehicle early Monday morning. Lee Padilla said he was driving east on Riverdale Road one mile west of the Weber River about 3.30 a.m. when he saw an over 10-foot tall creature loping across the highway about 25 feet away. It had long legs, a head like a grill with long dark brown furry hair that was in layers. The thing was very graceful. I would say it would weigh about 600 pounds. It crossed the road from north to south, and I would estimate it was running about 35 miles per hour. I saw it for maybe four or five seconds. The creature kept its face in the direction it was running, Padilla said. When asked if the incident frightened him, Padilla answered with a slow no, and then he added, I was more curious than anything else. It didn't pay the least bit of attention to me or my car. A check of the area Tuesday by Padilla, J. Baker of North Ogden, and photographer John Shoup failed to uncover any tracks. The highway sides, however, were solid grass and weeds, and fields in the area were hard planted in alfalfa, and even the footprints of the men did not show. There was one plowed field on the north side, but we didn't find any tracks in it, said Baker, who also reported seeing the creature together with the other three men and several boys. Three years ago, you went to mountains. Padilla said after the creature crossed out of the headlight beams, he turned down a small dirt road and directed the beam of lights across the field, hoping he could follow the creature or spot it again. The headlight beams didn't spot the creature, Padilla said. 
but they did attract the attention of a state highway trooper who drove up and asked him what was going on. When the trooper was told what had taken place, he took off in a hurry, and I got the impression he was going to look for it. The witness said the creature had long arms and was very erect as it ran across the highway. Padilla said the creature moved gracefully, and not in the manner usually attributed to the slouch and swinging gait of a gorilla or member of the ape family. Padilla said the area where the creature crossed is farmland and open fields with little cover. The location is only a few miles from where sightings were reported and tracks of Bigfoot found early in February in South Weber outside the mouth of the Weber Canyon near the Weber River.